Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on power system testing topics. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. The SIGRA conference and exhibition is a leading international power system industry event for technical experts worldwide. It takes place every two years in Paris, France, most recently at the end of August 2022. Due to the COVID pandemic, it has been four years since the event last took place in 2018. For those who are not able to attend this year's event in person, we are devoting two episodes of Energy Talks to share with you various impressions of SIGRA 2022. Reporting directly from the Exhibition Hall at SIGRA 2022 in Paris, is Omicron event specialist Abigail Mayette. In this special SIGRA episode, Abigail had the opportunity to find out more about SIGRA as an organization, the significance of this year's event, as well as which important industry topics were addressed. Hello, Abigail. Hi, Scott, and everybody from SIGRA 2022 in Paris. So joining me here today at SIGRA 2022 is Philippe Adam, SIGRA Secretary General. So, Philippe, we can start with you telling us a little bit about Seagray mm -hmm. as an organization. Yeah, so Seagray started in 1921, a little more than one century ago. It was initially an international conference on large electric systems. At this time, they call it networks. Seagray stands for the French Conférence Internationale des Grands Réseaux Électriques. For the French, when they talked about this conference, they yeah. call it La Cigre. For the British or English-speaking people, there is no difference between La Cigre or Le Cigre. And you probably know that today we say Le Cigre. Yeah, we so, do. Okay. In 2000, there was a decision of Cigre governing bodies to turn this conference name into a council name, like the World Energy Council. C uh, now stands for council. So we were in 2000, uh, Conseil International des Grands Réseaux Électriques, the International Council on Large Electric Networks or Systems. Wow, wow. so a big change from yes, conference change. to council. And in 2018, so not so far from now, the same administrative council decided that the name of CIGRE should just be a brand name. So it, it is no longer an acronym. CIGRE is CIGRE. It's, it's an association because after 10 years after its creation mm -hmm. in 1931, it became an association because those who attended the first Sigre conference, they were so happy of the results of being together. There were only 231 experts from 20 countries at this time. They said, well, it's so good to discuss together topics of common interest to prepare the industry of important changes. At this time, electrification was the main driver. So they decided to continue having a conference, but in between conference, they wanted to capitalize all the learnings of each conference. And then it became an association with another purpose than just convening conferences. Mm -hmm. So they established study committees, national committees, so that working groups could consolidate yeah. all the information they can learn from the conference. Today, this part of consolidating the knowledge of experts that when they show up during sessions is done by the study committees. And it is the largest part of what SIGRE is doing, working, preparing publications, publications on state of the arts, publications on recommendations for standardization, so this is what SIGRE is doing today. So mainly the type of work that it does is research Well, in this day. I would not say research. Of course, research is a part of it, but it's more consolidating the existing expertise in order to share it. When during conference, for example, some subjects seem to be very popular or interesting a lot mm -hmm. of people, the study committees decide to appoint a working group to take all this information and to add a new one, of course, updated information, to prepare what we call a technical brochure, which is the best unbiased document on a specific content. For example, the integration of renewable energy sources into the grid. There are a lot of challenges. Some lobbies say, well, there is no problem. Some others say, well, it's impossible. 
here in Sigre, we have all these stakeholders together and they have to stand or to sit around tables to discuss in a very scientific manner. When the work of preparing the brochure is finished, we have documents which is technically sound. It is reviewed by the study committee and it is the best technical information that you can get on these topics. And there are References also used for standardization to be established because standardization is hard. Mm-hmm. There are some political issues sometimes. With SIGRE, we have not just obstacles. So we provide technical knowledge, technical documents that are unbiased because they have been agreed both by operators, those who have to face the issues, by the technology providers, mm-hmm. and also by regulators. When they are involved, not all of them are involved, but sometimes we have regulators, so they they bring their point of view. We have a lot of consultants who are facing the issues. And then the products that we provide is really unbiased and high quality. So for all of this work, hundreds of people must be involved. Worldwide, how large is the Seagray organization? Yes, to answer this question, we have to distinguish the members So members are those people who support the organization by paying a membership fee. They are not necessarily involved in the work. They are interested in the production of Sigre because it is their daily job and they want to have some input from Sigre. The working groups constitute the factory of Sigre and Mm -hmm. this is where we manufacture the publications. They involve not all these people, but only, let's say, 4,500 experts. Distributed over... 270 working groups, all the topics we are working on now. And once a topic is decided to be prepared as a publication, then we have a new working group. And each working group is given a limited time to produce a brochure. Every year we have new working groups and we have working groups terminating their work and they are disbanded. So the experts are available to be taken in another working group. This is the way we work. And it's important to say, I like the role of national committees. We have 61 national committees. Although we have 115 countries from where our members come, but only 61 are organized as national committees and they provide the human resources, I would say. So whenever a new working group is created, we send this information to national committees, asking them to propose members, even young members. So, you know, the Seagre conference and exhibition takes place every two years. So why every two years? And why in Paris? The first Conférence Internationale des Grands Électriques, the first Seagrave session took place in Paris. It was decided by two persons, mainly. One was the president of IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission, which is for standardization, Mm -hmm. and the secretary general of a union of electricity companies in France. And, well, they decided to make it in Paris. So these 231 delegates to the first year, they came to Paris. They found that it was interesting and maybe they should reconvene such a conference another year. Given the time to prepare it, it was not a year after, but two years after. Until the Second World War, it was in June of odd years, 21, 23. And then after the war, they restarted in 1946, an even year. So that's why today we are the session in even years. This is just a historical. And uh, why in Paris? Because Paris has been for many years the place for the session. And many members of Sigre don't even say Sigre session, they say the Paris session. Recently, it was discussed to move this session from Paris to other places, mm-hmm. but uh, finally the decision was to keep it in Paris. We found that it was a good decision because preparing such an event, even, even today, where we have 800 authors, 800 reviewed papers, high quality papers. You cannot just make that every year. We have a process and we tried to find if it was possible to have more frequent, but mm-hmm. uh, no, it's not possible. And also it allows other organizations to put their conferences in between. So the Seagre conference, not the Paris session, mm-hmm. you know, you, you hold other events that take place you know, in other parts of the world. Which one of these events might be of interest to our listeners? I would like first to say that annually there are about 100 Seagre events 
Place. taking place. Most of them are organized by national committees. So at national levels, they convene their national experts or, and their national audience to make that. The most important SIGRE events involve the Technical Council and the Central Office here in Paris. So we have this session and then we have symposia. Symposia are events prepared by one national committee with the support for the technical part of the technical council or the study committees that are international uh, and managed by, by the central office, if I may say. So, symposia. Uh, last year, we had two symposia because they are in odd years and not during normal sessions. One was in Ljubljana, in Slovenia. Uh, the other was in Kyoto, in Japan. And for this one, because of COVID, they moved it at the beginning of this year, in 2022. Mm -hmm. And the next symposia are in uh, 2023, odd years. So one is in Mascat, you know, in Oman, on a transition to innovative, sustainable, resilient power systems. We have another one in Cairns, in Australia. Again, the title is the end-to-end -end electric system transition, development, operation and integration. So that shows you what are the topics of interest for our community. And we have regional events. Some national committees have their own regional events. I would like to cite three of them. The countries of the Gulf, you know, Arab countries of yeah. the Gulf, they have their own event. They call it Gulf Cooperation Council Power 2022. It will take place in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, in November. It is very well attended and they have the capacity to organize it every year. Their brand is GCC Power, organized by CIGRE. Another one which is very important is a U.S. event organized by the National Committee of the USA. The name is Grid of the Future and it will take place in October. And this one is also annual. So they have the capacity because the focus is smaller. And there is another one which is organized by a group of national committees in a region. For example, in May, we had the South East Europe national committees that organize a big event, a big symposium in Vienna. What connection does SIGRE have with Omicron? Omicron is a, is a collective member of SIGRE. And SIGRE has a lot of individual members from Omicron. I, I just made a, a survey of our big list and we have 17,000 members. Wow. So I just tried to find where Omicron was identified. 47 members, 40 individuals and 7 collectives. And they come from 12 countries, Austria, <laughs> Germany, Australia, and France, Mexico, UK, and so on. Those experts, some of them are also members of working groups in the field of Omicron, yeah. Over the past four years, as you know, worldwide, we were hit with the COVID-19 pandemic and the SIGRE conference and exhibition took place differently. What can you tell us about this year's event? How is it different? So, yes, 2020, we were prepared to launch the session as usual. And suddenly in March, uh, there was a decision to lock down the world, uh, yeah. or at least in Europe and uh, in many other countries. So we had to consider that many works had been done so far. Authors had prepared papers, lecturers had prepared tutorials for this session. The study committees had prepared workshops because they have to anticipate. Mm -hmm. course. So in March, a lot of work had already been done. So we decided to have an event, but of course a virtual event. So we call it the e-session. And it took place the same dates as a normal session, but right. we had to extend it because the content was so dense that we had to make it over eight days. We had 2,500 delegates, which is a good score. We had sponsors, so no exhibitors, of course. So we gave the opportunity in between the presentations to broadcast advertisements or information about companies and so that allowed us to balance our costs. So that was quite interesting. In fact, this e-session of 2020 was a, a super poster session. It had not the same format as a normal session where you have group discussion meetings, I mean conferences, tutorials, this kind of thing. So it was quite successful and we could even gain some money out of that. In 2021, then we say, well, okay, the, the session has been postponed to 2021. So we will organize a normal session with all the, the settings in 2021. But unfortunately, 2021, we still were locked down. So uh, we had to think about how could SIGRE continue to exist and be there. So we decided to create another kind of virtual event, very different from the one in 2020. 
both in terms of technology used. In 2020, it was webinars, essentially. Mm -hmm. Now, this time, we wanted to have something very similar to what we have in Paris. So we booked rooms here in the Palais des Congrès. We asked some of the organizers from abroad to, mm -hmm. to come to manage the different processes. So we had studios with cameras, sound takers, producers. So we learned how to work with different people, with technicians, with the people professionals of broadcasting, of taking sound. For us, it was really interesting because we learned how to work with other kind of expertise. This virtual centennial session, as we call it for 2021, different from the e-session, it took eight days and we only broadcast, because it was, it was mainly broadcasting, four hours a day. Why? Because we wanted that those delegates, remote delegates who were in Canada, could sleep before, and that it was not too late for our colleagues in Japan or Australia. So that's why each day was four hours. Wow. Yes. 2022. So, of course, face-to-face, -face, in person, back again. But we have learned a lot of uh, what we had done in 2020 and 2021. For example, we have decided to include streaming because we, we have seen how it can be done, uh, recordings. We have continued to use Sigre TV. And Sigre TV was invented last year to propose other things than technical events. We have invited startups to the exhibition, which was not the case before. The only thing we did for those who attended remotely they could not have exactly the same interaction facilities than those in Paris. Because if you give too much facilities, as we did in 2021, people will stay at home or in their office, which is not good for exhibitors. <laughs> so we decided, well, we knew that some people would not come because of COVID, still in China, for example. But we also had identified during the virtual session we had, there were people who had not expected to come to Paris. So they are interested in the content of the session, but for some reason they cannot come. So now, thanks to the decision to stream all the events, we can satisfy more delegates. So which areas of power industry are represented this year at Seagrave? Well, I would say that they are the same as in the previous sessions. And in fact, I told you that Seagrave activities technical or even during the session, are organized by 16 study committees. So you have equipment, transformers, rotating machines, or high voltage equipment, what we call subsystems, transmission lines, underground lines, substations, protections, HVDC, high voltage direct current, and so on. So, and we have other study committees that consider the system more globally, not by equipment or subsystem. So how do you operate operation and control. Uh, you have, how do you develop? We have a study committee on development and economics because development is connected to the economy. Then we have another one on uh, interaction with the environment, another one on technical issues, technical simulation of the operation, another one on market, the electricity market and regulations, another one on active distribution system. And we have two that are more dedicated to horizontal, as we call them, disciplines like uh, IT, information technology, uh, or uh, information transmission. And we have also another one we deal with material. So not directly involved in system or equipment. So all these areas are covered by SIGRE for many years now. The last reorganization was in 2000. Mm. And today it, it fits well with the needs of the industry. And we have been able to incorporate the new issues of the industry, integration or renewables, the cyber security, this kind of thing. Well, this leads me to my next question, which is what do you see as particularly important milestones or trends in the industry? Our organization allows us to follow these different trends and we adapt. We have been adapting all the way to the different issues that industry is carrying out. I always cite the integration of renewables. When we speak of transition of the energy, it means uh, that it is a transition within the power system. It means that we have to then to integrate new kind of generation, that we have to integrate new kind of threats on the, on the networks like uh, cyber security. It means that we have to cope with environmental issues. So we are organized already for that. So today, 
the, this setting, and we had a discussion recently within the Technical Council, this organization allows to meet the requirements of the industry. For example, the last technical developments, I would say, they are on recycling equipment or design equipment, considering that they have to be recycled. Another one which is very important, high-voltage or very high-voltage equipment, very compact, use greenhouse gases which are much more dangerous or much more harmful than CO2. The famous SF6, maybe you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. It's a component that is present now in many, many switch gear. It will have to be replaced. And CGRE has played a major role in identifying what the alternatives could be. So with the perspective of manufacturers, of course, but also of the users, if you are only a manufacturer, you will not follow exactly the same goals as an operator and, and vice course, versa. Yeah. So Sigre managed to put together all this point of view and to provide. You spoke of research. Yes, there was a, a kind of research work done by Sigre uh, in that field. I was happy to see that in the exhibition, two big companies are providing today alternative uh, gases to put in their gas-insulated uh, substations with, of course, sometimes very complicated technology implemented, but it works. So would you say changing these gases is the focus of Seagree this year? It is not the only one. Integration of renewables at a large scale with a big share of intermittent power mm -hmm. being integrated in the mix of some countries. That's really an issue because the power systems have been used for many years to have rotating machines to supply the power by steam, by gas, by nuclear power, by water. Everything was rotating. Now, with solar, even with wind farms, the blades turn at the speed of wind, not at the speed of a network. So they have to put adaptators, which are static equipment. The power system cannot be operated as in the past if we have a lot of renewables, because they use static equipment. You know that because we have intermittent renewables, you need to supply power even when there is no wind, when there is no sun. So the solution very often most of the time now, is storage. But storage systems based on batteries are also static equipment, so no rotating machine. So it comes to a point where there are less and less rotating machines of the power system. And it means that we have to review completely the way to control the voltage, to control frequency, to trigger protections, for example. It's different if you have rotating machines or a static machine. So these are the things that are considered is secret, and you can find a lot of works or experiences. Well, that's great. You've provided us with interesting information, um, definitely to do more research on. We're halfway through this week-long event. What are your impressions so far? I'm very happy to see how many delegates we got finally. When we prepared this session, we had the experience of 2020, 2021, so we still had a lot of uncertainties. And our best estimates to calculate our budget for example, was to have 3,000 delegates. Today, we have 3,700 delegates. Wow. So we are happy. We feel comfortable. This is good for CIGRE finances because we are organized in such a way that only session years bring positive results. The rest of the time, we provide services, of course, but yeah. we spend more money on IT, on staff than uh, during a session year. So it's a blessed that we can now have a session with so many delegates. We will restore really our finances. I was really relieved when I saw that we passed the 3,000 limit, but then it kept it's growing. <laughs> yeah, so we, we are very happy. It must be nothing but pleasing, of course. And I just want to go back to what you previously said. You mentioned rotating machines, you mentioned renewable gas. Are these topics being addressed at this year's event? So, yes, they will be addressed, but not only these, there will be other topics. But today it is difficult to say which ones have been the most addressed. We have to wait for the end of the session. And at the end of the session, our uh, technical council will meet on Saturday uh, with all the input from the organizers of the different conference, workshops, and so on. And they will give us a first feedback on what was presented and their feeling about new topics have emerged, topics have been developed the most. To answer this question, we have to wait a little. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> It will be available through the general reports that will be prepared by all the organizers. And for me, for example, I have not attended any of them because I'm too busy. I know the preferential subjects that require them have been treated, but I don't know how. 
So I cannot say, well, this subject has yeah. been more valued than another one. And this will be reflected in the proceedings of the session soon. Well, we will wait until the until the end, until you know the documents are made available to us and everybody else. Major challenges facing the power industry over the next two years. How do you see Seagray supporting these industry changes, or how is Seagray already supporting these industry changes? Power systems are essential for the energy transition. I just tell you why. Our keynote speaker on Sunday has showed us some studies that were done in the U.S., but it can cover many other countries. No other sector has made the efforts of the power industry to contribute to the reduction of greenhouse emissions, the reduction of CO2 emission mainly, yeah? but also SF6 is one of them. And, and very, very little was made by the other sectors. I mean uh, transportation. Of course, there are a few electric vehicles, mm -hmm. but not enough to reach the target of zero emission, net zero emission yeah. in 2050. Buildings, buildings still need to burn gas to heat. They are not well isolated, so they will create a lot of losses of energy. And another thing, the buildings are built with cement, and cement is an industry that consumes a lot of coal, of fossil fuels. So one day, And it's starting, but slowly, when they, all these industries will have to go from fossil fuels to electricity. So that will put more pressure on power systems. And today we know we have never had such a challenge to increase the volume of energy we have to deal with. Of course, it, it will be green energy one day, but at the, today we are far from having 100% green energy, so the efforts are, are huge. So our conclusion made by our speaker is we will need more and more power systems or to, to have bigger power systems in the future. And the, the challenges are really amazing. The part our systems have to play in this transition is huge. It is the biggest one. And CIGRE is supporting the industry in that field by allowing its members, so the manufacturers, uh, operators, uh, consultants, academia, to share the best information they have and try to find together the best solutions, where to go. Our dream is that we could also be heard by politicians by regulators, because we know that the task is very, very difficult and we have some doubts sometimes that it can be done. To have more electric vehicles, you will need more power systems. If you want to, uh, to have more renewables, you have to, to go and fetch these renewables where they are, in the sea, you know, or in the mountains, or uh, in large uh, uh, deserts where you have installed the photovoltaic. And this means a lot of transmission systems. A lot of copper, aluminium insulation, mm -hmm. and we have never had in the in the history of power systems such big need. So Sigre will support all the industry by providing the possibility to exchange and to support the best solutions. So would you say maybe in in one sentence the the aim would then be for power industry to revolutionize exactly. all other industries. I would like to, to add also, technology will help, and our work is, uh, is technology. Of course. But, but humans are essential. And our goal in CIGRE is to have humans working together to take the best of collaboration. Of course, there are machines, there are drones, there are algorithms, inter uh, artificial intelligence, uh, VR, virtual reality. Okay, that's fine. But uh, what is important is that men, women can work together to reach this new target for the benefit of humanity. Yeah? Because electricity will be the blood of humanity. Yeah. No electricity, no more water, because no pump. No electricity, no more traffic lights, so mesh. No light, no transport. No, no. It's a really good note to finish on. And I, I really like the fact that you mentioned the industry, but then you also go back to you know what is essential humans mm. it's you know we make the difference collaboration makes the difference and i think you know that's that's one of the key successes of the seagray mm. conference and exhibition organization so philip before we finish many of our listeners have not 
been able to, you know, attend this year's Seagray event in Paris. Um, how can they still get more information about Seagray and, you know, related events around the world, such as symposiums mm -hmm. and the regional events? Well, we have developed, before the pandemic, a lot of digital platforms and uh, websites to access all the technical documentation. Now, many videos. It was not like this in the past. Today, we have video tech, video library, mm -hmm. where all the events that take place during the session and during a symposia are available for downloading. But it is for members or for delegates, those who have paid. So, If your listeners are delegates, mm -hmm. they will have access to this by replay very soon. If they are not delegates, they have, will have to wait until the end of the year because priority to delegates at the end of the year, it will be for free for members. If you are not a member, you have to pay to access. I would just like to finish by informing your listeners that they can connect to those platforms very easily. So the first one, which you don't need to be a member to access to it, is cigre.org. Then we have the session website, which is session.cigre.org. We have the online library where we have all the stuff, more than 14,000 documents. A rich library. Yeah, yes, with, with all the technical brochures, but also the papers that have been discussed during sessions and events. It is e-cigre.org. We have the digital magazine, Electra. Electra is a journal. We have also a magazine of high-level documents, high content in terms of expertise. We call Seagree Science Engineering. It is free for everybody, even if you are not a member. CSE.Seagree.org. And we have bi-monthly newsletters. All this you can access if you are a member for 88 euro per year. So it's not that much. Not that much. Okay. And uh, that provides you uh, information on every aspect of uh, power systems and Siri, of course. Well, that's great. There you have it, folks. You have all of the platforms on which you, know, you can access this information for free and, of course, also for a fee, which seems to be worth it. Um, so, Philippe, thanks very much for your time. Mm -hmm. It has been a great pleasure speaking with you, learning more about Seagray, of course, as an organization, and, bien sûr, to hear your insights into important current and future power industry trends. Okay, it was my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much. So guys, this is Abigail Mayet from the Omicron Exhibition Stand at Seagrave 2022 in Paris. Back to you, Scott. Thank you very much, Abigail. In our next special SIGRA episode, Abigail will continue her coverage from the Omicron Exhibition Stand at SIGRA 2022. She will speak with our application experts about important areas of focus and new solutions for power system testing. Also reporting from SIGRA 2022 is Iris Fisher from the Energy Talks podcast team. She gathered impressions of SIGRA 2022 from exhibition visitors. So be sure to listen to our upcoming second episode from SIGRA. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We always welcome your questions and feedback. Simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing and offers you the matching solution for your application. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. There, under events, you can find information about upcoming exhibitions, conferences, webinars, workshops, and courses where you can meet us in person or online. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone.